Okay, I'm your grandmother, and I'm going to give you some advice. Don't take any wooden nickels. It means don't get involved with jackasses. <laughs> hey, it's Gina. This is episode 10 of Don't Take Any Wooden Nickels. Uh, <laughs> listen, there is a thing out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Oh, Steven's with me today. Say hi, Steven. <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry. <laughs> what a great introduction. Oh. Um, right. This girl makes a boatload of money by recording things like this. Yeah. Hello. How are you? ASMR. What is it? You're going to have to look the uh, what that stands for. ASMR. Is it like an acronym? Yeah. Oh. Yep. So you know about this. I've, I've, yeah. People do it. It's uh, big. What's it called? ASMR. MR. Okay, ASMR. Oh, okay. Uh, autonomous. Okay. Is that, did I say that? I word don't. Right? I have no idea. Probably. A U T O N O M O U S. Autonomous. Autonomous sensory meridian response. Right. Is a tingling sensation that topically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine. Yeah. Just from hearing things like this. Mm -hmm. isn't that weird yeah did you feel it from the top of your spine and down to your I toes didn't. or i didn't there but okay keep going okay hold on <laughs> i felt that one okay. that was good you nailed it you felt that one huh yeah that's great okay how about this <laughs> <laughs> oh that has a totally different effect on me <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> what kind of effect? Not what you're looking for. <laughs> oh, no tinglys on the scalp. Okay. Whew. I don't even know why I thought of that. <laughs> um, this is my boyfriend. He joined me on the last episode, which was really fun. If you actually didn't listen to that one, go back because we talk about how he ran a background check on me. I did. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Were you legitimately thinking like she could have some priors? Well, I, uh, yeah, I did. I thought there was a, a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So I wanted to talk about how you and I literally met and went out. Okay, the first layer of this is... Our first date, I was on crutches. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that was wild. If that was me, I'd be like, look, you're going to have to wait until I'm a couple weeks into this rehab <laughs> right. before I'm going to be out trudging around on a date, you know? So I was impressed that you were willing to try Yeah. despite that. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool right off the bat. That said a lot about your character. True. Uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I show up and uh, there you are hobbling down the steps <laughs> yep. with crutches. Okay, babe, do you remember after a few weeks and then months, you said to me, you go, you know, I mean, I really like you and everything, but I've never actually seen you walk. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, it had been a while and you hobbled still, even without the crutches. I never really saw you walk. Well, and at one point you were, I think you were kind of going like, what if she has some weird kind of walk that I can't tolerate? It is weird though that we started out uh, dating and we couldn't dance. I, I couldn't walk right, you know. I couldn't run if the zombies were going to come get us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny. I forgot all about that. Now, you know I couldn't go upstairs because I live in a two-level right. uh, house. I was still sleeping on my couch. Yeah. So I had to have my mom come over and go upstairs, and I had to tell her where the outfit was that I wanted to wear on our date. She went upstairs and picked out all my clothes. What a trooper to put all that effort to rope your mom into it. My favorite thing about that was that you had little booties on your feet. Yeah. I'm trying to think why I picked those shoes. You didn't want to have any heels, anything to, weird to deal with. That's true. They were flats. They were flats, little yes. booty flats. Mm -hmm. That was what it was. Yeah. And they were just like those little things you buy in a vending machine because truly uh, my girlfriend and I, Birdie, were in Vegas a few years before mm -hmm. and we made a mistake of wearing these really cool high heels right. out to a club. 
well, this club is really smart and has a vending machine that sells little tiny booties. I'm not kidding. You put 10 bucks in there and it shoots a little pair of shoes out. And I've kept those all these years, and that's what I was wearing. So that you could go on the dance floor, take off your uncomfortable yes. shoes. Mm-hmm. That is that is smart. So basically, you were really dressing to impress that night with the vending machine booties you got from Vegas. <laughs> for $10. Right. Those, yeah. were, those were good. We should talk about this frock you've been wearing for three straight days. Right here. That's cute. That's funny. <laughs> First of all, it's funny you call it a frock. I don't know what to call it. What is it? Uh, just a dress. It doesn't really like a dress. Really? It's kind of like a beachy dress. It's right. like a. It's really something that uh, I would wear on the beach over my bathing suit. Right. It's long. It goes all the way down to your ankles. Full coverage. But we are not at the beach. We're in Ohio. We're not. We're not. <laughs> We're in the middle of Ohio. <laughs> And it's just so comfortable. <sighs> if you watch Steinfeld, which I know you didn't, but I did. um, okay, do you remember the episode where George was like, "I would just love to drape myself in velvet"? And <laughs> I watched Steinfeld, but I don't know that one. Okay, well, that's how I feel. I, I'm just draping myself in this really comfortable material. It's super and I comfy looking. Don't want to change. So, what was the goal of this? What were we gonna? What were you trying to shoot towards? Well, I was gonna say we went out on our first date. Yep. And we went to Corner Kitchen, which did not survive right. COVID. Yeah, didn't make it. And that was unfortunate because they had the best meatloaf. Um, but then our first date happened. Three weeks later was the lockdown. Yep. <laughs> it was. Three weeks later, everything well, it's changed. Just such a wild time to have met someone is the, where I was going. We had like three weeks to do normal dating stuff. Right. And, and actually, right now, maybe a month and a half ago, really, we've been able to get back to what it was like that first three weeks we knew each other. I don't know how many times we went out, but it was, you know, dinner or... Three or four times. Yeah. Do I go stay at my house and you stay at yours and we just text each other and <laughs> FaceTime? Right. I mean, I don't know if we would have made it if we hadn't have stayed together. Well, it's funny how things work. We can't go anywhere right now. You have to have a, a piece of paper that authorizes you to go places. Remember oh, that's that? Right. It was like essential right. workers were allowed. Yeah. Right. You remember how great traffic was, though, for that little yeah, it was, time? It was awesome. It doesn't matter <laughs> it what time of day. One benefit to the pandemic. But because of that, we decided to do the, you know, let's stay together and uh-huh. like ride this storm out kind of deal. And we actually figured out we liked each other even more. We crammed in. I would say, you know, almost a year's worth of dating in like three months. Yeah. Because we were basically living together. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was wild. Um, <clears throat> but here we are. Having a blast. <laughs> what was that? I didn't know if I was going to say something. Do the laugh, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a story behind that stupid laugh. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Like I ask him to do something and he, it's outrageous and I know it is and he knows it is. Instead of answering me in words, he answers me with that hey, laugh. Let's do it real quick. So so just ask me something ridiculous. I'll, I'll be like, you know, we'll go out and get something to eat and he'll say, hey, I'm ordering fries for me. Do you want any for yourself? And I'll be like, no, I don't want to eat any French fries. And then we get home and he breaks all his food out and I inevitably look at him and say, babe, can I have one French fry? And then I hear this. <laughs> sure thing, babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this nervous laugh oh, man. that uh, that says so much more than any words would yeah. say, you know? I mean, do you ever do that? I don't know what it is. Like, I don't want a whole order of French fries, um, but I would just like one, and that really, really gets under your skin. Well, you're making me sound like a, you know, like I'm a tyrant well, here over no, here. No, it's not a tyrant thing. It's it's just like one of your quirks. You get enough food that you know you want. Here's what it is. Okay. If you were to say, no, I don't want a whole order of fries, but is it cool if I have a few of yours before I get the food? Totally different scenario. Because you will, right. instead of ordering a medium, you'll get a large? Well, I could alter the order, the size, but what really would happen is in my head, I'm Mentally. already I'm already ready to give up a few. Oh. It's when I get them and my brain starts doing the calculation of, oh gosh, look at that amount of this over here and that that I'm about to eat. And mm-hmm. then you change it on me. Mm. Do you know who else is like this? A five year old. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it like you. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Do it. 
Do the laugh. Do the laugh. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what happened. We need to do video on this <laughs> podcast so you can see the shenanigans. Yeah. 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 That's, you know, I think other people I bet out there that are, could be listening to this know what that's all about. They might be in kindergarten, but they'll yes, agree. Yes, exactly. Yeah. This is assuming our podcast is huge with five-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to hear like little Johnny go, I totally agree with you, Steven. Is that how little Johnny sounds? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't like to share my food either. <laughs> oh. With my sister. <laughs> <laughs> he won't even let me like well I, w- I won't say you won't let me because eventually you do but reluctantly give me a sip of anything same idea right why is that so many times you will waste your drink too and i'll find him and i'll throw him away and be like oh <laughs> he wouldn't give me a sip earlier but he also didn't finish a third of it so what's up with that most of the time it's with a a drink from a restaurant scenario it's not yeah. like something from the house already where I can stick it back in the fridge. I can, you know, it's like out. I think that it's just like, I want to taste it. Yeah. I don't want to drink the whole thing. I don't even want more than a sip. I just want to like a little tiny taste and that, mm, that bugs you. Yeah, it does. And I have always, if you ever want to taste my stuff, don't even bat an eye. How often do I ask to do that though? I wish you would ask more. But why don't I ask you? Because you hate it when I ask you. Exactly. Because if I ask you... Then I can't say no. I have to. I have to then, right? Because I'm. I, I can't expect you to do something I wouldn't do. But you know what? That being said, I've loosened up a lot. I've always asked for. You know, can I just have a bite? Yeah. Can I just have one? Right. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because I just like to taste things. Yeah, well, that makes sense. <laughs> one of our major differences is that you enjoy more foods than I do. Types of foods, oh, flavors God. of foods. I'm pretty picky, and I don't desire to taste a bunch of new stuff like you do. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's part. That's probably a big part of it. So there's a thing, it's called only child syndrome. Yeah. So it's about, you know, it's like not sharing It's stuff. described as yeah. spoiled, self-absorbed, and bossy. Oh, man. Oh, those are bad. I know. Those are bad. Do you think <sighs> that you suffer from only child syndrome? Because you are. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think the, uh, I think when it comes to food, yeah. <laughs> when it comes yeah, to food. Yeah, because you're not, you know. I don't mind sharing uh, so many other things. Food, I'm weird about. Yeah. I have a story. I can tell you about that a little bit. Okay. In high school, a guy uh, used to take French fries off my tray. So this is a trigger for you. Yeah. And I actually, we got in a fight over it. Really? Like a real fist fight, you know. Dude, chill out with my fries, you know. And so one day I said something to him finally like, hey, knock it off. We're taking my fries. (laughs) And he was kind of a jerk actually. And he reached over. He goes, hey, do do you want your burger? Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah. And he puts his finger in the middle of my burger, like through it, makes a hole into oh, my no. burger no, meat no, no. all the way down to the tray. And he's like, what about now? Oh. And I came unglued, man. Like that just, that was just enough. That's my food. Here's the real question. Did he ever mess with your food after Absolutely that Absolutely not. Nobody. In fact, people thought I was a little bit over the top for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and here we are 30 years later babe and you still have an issue with sharing i do let me tell you this little fact okay the act of giving away something desirable even at a cost to oneself is perhaps no more evident than when it comes to food see right <laughs> so this is a thing it is yeah yeah i love to share food with you i would to give you anything off my plate, right? As long as it's not the last bite. Mm. You know I'm weird about that. I never, right. and I personally won't finish anything in the fridge without saying, hey, is that okay if I have the last of this? And that I have a story for that because it's been ingrained in me from yeah. childhood. Um, but I do experience this, and there was a study done that validates how I feel when I share food. It actually does release oxytocin. Not only for the giver, but also the receiver releases the oxytocin and that facilitates bonding and cooperation between those two individuals. Interesting. Okay. But you've never felt that. (laughs) You feel rage. (laughs) But, you know, I think we might have talked about it. It, It's when I plan for it ahead of time. Right. Before I actually get the food in my space. You already know what you're going to relinquish. Then I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, maybe I should tell you that study was done with chimpanzees. Oh, gee. 
and not humans. Okay. But I still really connect to that study <laughs> because I do. I like I like to give, you know, and I think you it's, do. Yeah, you definitely do. I you always share like that. Yeah. <laughs> So we actually had, um, you know, got pretty lucky. We got to mm-hmm. do a few trips last year. We did my like annual family trip to uh, the Outer Banks in North Carolina. And for my 40th birthday, which, you know, of course, everybody's birthday last year, we all felt like we got robbed, you know, we were able to sneak off to Florida, had a nice little trip down there. Oh, and uh, remember, we also went to Niantic, uh, Connecticut. Oh, my God, to visit your dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot that one. So we really got a lot of trips in. We did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of lucky. Some people literally did not leave their house or go on a vacation for over a year. Gosh, that's rough. I know. But the trip I really want to talk about is Grand Canyon. Oh, Grand Canyon. And luckily we planned that in like this perfect little pocket of time, didn't we? We did. Because Arizona had just lifted its uh, mask mandate. And we weren't in the heart of the tourist season. It was in April. So it was a little bit cool still. That's right. For a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was still a pretty good crowd, but it wasn't like you probably see right now. July. Like what they say it can be right. bad. But the coolest moment for me was when you first kind of the horizon mm-hmm. kind of reveals the Grand Canyon in all its glory. And yes. you sort of just kind of whisper, like, oh my God, can you see that? Everybody's like, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, it was it was so cool. <laughs> I'm still trying to is that a, what was the first other sound you made? Is that a dog? I don't know. I was thinking it was like a um, a bird of some sort. Oh. I felt that from my spine tingling. Yeah. Down. Yeah. But you were, you walk up and you have that feeling. And, and this was Mather Point. Yes. That we first went to. That was our initial impact of seeing the Grand Canyon. Oh, but the other thing that was really cool. Remember, uh, we go to the entrance of the park right. and there's the gate. And we're prepared to pay something. Oh, that's right. Right? We're like, well, how much does it cost to get into the state park? Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, "Uh, here's your pamphlet. And today is National Park Day. Of all days in the year, we happen to go to the Grand Canyon on National Park Day. Because it's 30 bucks to get in. Not Not like any old park. But not that day. No. So that was kind of cool. That Free. was neat. Yeah, that was that was actually really cool. So we do all of our touring around the Grand Canyon. I mean, we have a blast. I brought um, a tripod so that we didn't ever have to ask anyone to take our picture, which you have to admit was pretty cool. At first, I hated it. Yeah. You know, because... I can't believe you're lugging this thing. <laughs> I, yeah, it's not like it's big and cumbersome kind of deal. It's just that it's, you know, you got to set it up each time and it's got to be just right. But it provided some really cool pictures, so... Once I saw a few of those about midway through, I was excited. So um, we visited all these points along the way, and then we're heading back to our resort where we were staying in Sedona. But as we're leaving the Grand Canyon, we see some signs. Yeah, the standard yellow diamond-shaped signs that are warning signs for things. Right, and a lot of times it has an animal on it, and usually in our neck of the woods, it's a deer. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, in the Grand Canyon, I'm happy to report it's a puma. Yes. Or a cougar or a panther or some kind of big cat. Some big cat. And I looked at Stephen and he looked at me and we go, there's cats here? <laughs> All I have to say is, thank God we didn't see that on the way to the Grand Canyon. I don't know if I would have got out of the car. Oh, my God. Yeah, we didn't see anything on the way in. No. Right. No signs warning us on the way in. That's probably on purpose. I think it's intentional. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of stuff in between that... We, you know, before we left the thing, you know, the thing that is really cool. Like we started on the Southern Rim, right? And we worked our way around towards the Northern Rim Mm -hmm. and we were headed towards something lookout. What was that thing (laughs) called? No, something watchtower. What was it? You got it. Something watchtower. Desert. Desert lookout. And I kept (laughs) calling it, I kept calling it the devil's watchtower. (laughs) Yes. Uh, for whatever reason, it stuck in my head that it was the Devil's Watchtower. And why is that? Well, it starts with a D, so mm-hmm. it is desert, right? Right. And Lookout is similar to Watchtower, and I thought it sounded cooler. If it was me, it would have been named Devil's Watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Um, and we actually have a video. It's on YouTube 
I'll post it in the description of this so you can check it out. Oh gosh, what a cool, what a cool place to go visit. Mm-hmm. Everybody should go there at least one time. I like to plan out my vacations, not to a T, but like have a pretty good idea of where we're going, what the distance is between this or that. And I think there's a few things from this trip that we can give you some tips on to avoid Mm. (laughs) some things that we, you know, didn't know, or maybe would have been easier. The number one thing is don't rent a car at the Phoenix airport from, was it thrifty? Oh, what was that? Remember that that line, that horrible literally line, literally 10 times longer than any other line. Oh, they, they said it was a three hour wait for those people to get their car. Yeah. Just rent from, you know, look at the reviews of the, of the places before you rent the car. Well, we, and we were staying in Sedona, so it made sense for us to, to get a car in Phoenix and make that like two hour drive up to Sedona versus you can fly into, I think there's an an airport uh, closer to Sedona or closer to the Grand Canyon. Like if, if that's your only destination. Mm-hmm. And remember too, Vegas is only a couple hours away from uh, the Grand Canyon, you so you could, could kind of technically go to yeah. fly to Vegas. We right. actually considered that right. at one point. Well, a friend of mine at work just did that, and he did that a few weeks after we got back. Really, he flew to Vegas with his family, and then they drove south to the Grand Canyon, and then oh, they went cool. back. So that was kind of their hub. Our hub was Sedona. And then another thing, while we were in Sedona, um, we had no idea, but if you go to any national attraction. Uh, or state park, you have to buy a permit That's right. to park in their parking lot. Yeah. It's only like a few bucks. And you can get it in basically any store right. you might shop at in Sedona. Um, and I think they even had like a little outdoor kiosk, that automated thing, but you have to use a credit card right. to buy it on site. Uh, but you can get a ticket from the state park ranger, I think, if you don't have it. So that, those are other little things we didn't know about. Yeah, that's not advertised unless no. you do some research, I guess. Yeah, and and I don't know what the consequence is if you don't have it, but anyway, it's good to know to get that because it covers you for for all the parks, you know. And then, oh my gosh, I wanted to tell them about that one little restaurant that we stumbled on, babe, with the meatloaf sandwich. Yeah, on the way up. Do you remember how cool that was? Maybe, what was it, maybe 25, 30 minutes on your way to Grand Canyon from Sedona up through the windy road, which is beautiful. It's Mm -hmm. a beautiful uh, part of the trip. Uh, Yeah, this place was called the Butterfly Garden Inn. Don Holes, H-O-E-L, apostrophe S, in the heart of Oak Creek Canyon cabins. So it was Don Holes Cabins. Yeah. So you literally can rent a cabin, and then this is kind of like your home-based little uh, restaurant. And then if you're staying at Don Holes Cabins, you kind of go to the Butterfly Garden Inn. And that's where we stopped. And it was just this random hole in the wall place. And here I'll tell you what street it was on too, because if you go to Sedona or you're on your way to the Grand Canyon, you got to stop here. It was on 89, 89A. Yeah. That's the north south road between the two right. spots. And then remember the water? Oh. They had it out of that spigot. Yeah. It was like a pump yes. uh, deal. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't have standard running water outside by the by the bathroom area. Mm-hmm. And by they just the, had. Like, Porta potties, I yeah. guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a neat stop. Uh, recommend that if you're in that area for sure. It really was. And so when you are at the Grand Canyon, the other thing that I did not know, I thought all the visiting spots, all the main spots where it had railings up, where there's no way that it would be easy to sort of stumble off the edge. Right. Not true. Not true. There are just tons. I mean, I guess it would be outrageous to try to... Fence that hole. Right. Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with the Native American tribes that mm-hmm. still exist there. No fences are allowed. Right. It changes the look of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And it's not like in its natural state anymore. So, yeah, there are deaths there because people can fall right over. Yeah, we, we were. stayed away from the edge. <laughs> we were precariously close yeah. to a couple edges while we wanted to get some good shots. When our parents were looking at our pictures, they're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You guys were so close. Yeah. Another thing to keep in mind, I guess, is the elevation. It's like 4,000 feet Mm -hmm. at the rim, the top of the Grand Canyon, and that means it's cooler. So you're thinking, oh, we're in Arizona, hot sun. Desert. Desert. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Well, once that sun goes down, remember we watched the sunset? Yeah. And as soon as that thing crusted... (laughs) below the horizon Stephen was like i'm gonna go start up the car and put the heat on i'll see you there yeah and if you watch that video in the description of this podcast you'll see our sunset i think it got down to 29 degrees no when the sun went down i remember not that that. cold 
When we left after the sun had set, it was in the mid-30s. Wow. I mean, I remember my teeth were chattering, but I didn't think it was that cold. Okay, so probably the biggest tip of all um, is, especially around sunset, sunset is kind of a real peaceful, serene time. A lot of folks just want to sit there and watch the sun go down uh, over the horizon of the Grand Canyon. It's beautiful, the long shadows. It's awesome. It's amazing. We, we got it on the time-lapse video if you want to watch it. In the description, I put the video. But most people associate that experience with, you know, quiet, right? And we... Serenity. And serenity, right. Um, well, we got us a nice spot. A lot of people around us had nice spots. Uh, you know, if if you talk to somebody, it's just a whisper. Hey, how you doing? You know, right? It's almost like a theater type right. situation, right? And we went early. It's like going to a movie theater early and getting the best seats. Yes, getting our seats. So, mm-hmm. this group shows up. Group of um, a mom and five or six of her daughters, or her friends. daughters and their friends. I, yeah. I don't know. And they were clearly locals. And you know, the rest of us are sort of sharing this this understood etiquette about how we're talking, mm-hmm. the volume that we're talking, not them at all. It was a lot of conversation, yes, full volume conversations if there was nobody else there. Yeah, it was like there was they were at a private screening right. of the Grand Canyon sunset and then not only that, babe, but they brought a smorgasbord. <laughs> and and I have to say because they kept talking about how great this Mexican restaurant is that they, you know, brought this catered food from. I wanted to go at one point. Could you at least pass the guac? <laughs> yeah. I mean, can we be involved since we all know every word you're saying? So the lesson is don't do that. Don't be those girls. Another Seinfeld reference. <laughs> Serenity, no! <laughs> That's what I wanted to yell so bad. But overall, right, the, the, everything was so cool. If it's not on your bucket list, you got to put it on there. Mm-hmm. And go, just yeah. do it. Don't just talk about doing it, do it. And everybody says, you know, pictures can't do it justice. Mm-hmm. And that is absolutely true. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've heard that a bunch about different things. This was 100% true. Yeah. So amazing in person. We had listeners in Turkey and India for our last podcast. How does that even happen? I don't know, but I wanted to give them a shout out. So... They're just out there looking for obscure, you know, podcasts. <laughs> a keyword obscure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe they were just, you know, searching on keywords like dating or something. Oh, yeah, because our, our last episode, which is what they apparently listened to, was uh, our horror stories from dating apps. So right. that could be. But thank you so much for listening. I hope you continue. It's Don't Take Any Wooden Nickels with Gina and Steven. If you can like this episode, subscribe, and maybe write a favorable uh, <laughs> review, that'd be awesome. I guess it helps us. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. See you later. Bye, guys. With the help of God, I'll see you next week. Take care and know that I love you. And what? And that's it.